back to the Rockinest Dragonus countdown of the season. Now let's go down to Sarah to see how things are looking out there for the last 10 seconds before the new year. <laughs> Darius, we're counting down the 10 newest dragons from Race to the Edge. Oh, that would make more sense. Kind of hard to hear with this thing on. Now, of course, Toothless Stormfly and our favorites are back, but what about all the new ones they've met thanks to the Dragon Eye? Right, time to take a closer look at the newest dragons. Let the countdown begin. No two days are the same when you're a dragon rider. But if there's one reoccurring theme, it's meeting new dragons. The Dragon Eye has opened up all kinds of new species, dragons, and even classes. Let's start with the first new dragon the riders found on Race to the Edge, the Snow Wraith. The first time they traveled to Glacier Island, a lone snow wraith kept their frostbitten hands full with its thermal vision, winter camouflage, and a bitter cold bite. And it wasn't until their return trip that the dragon riders learned that there was more than one snow wraith and that they had an unknown ability, burrowing through the snow for a surprise arctic attack. Brr, just looking at the snow race sent shivers down my whole spike. <laughs> Who's next? Our next dragon is entirely new, but it is a future spread. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta slow down, Sarah. Okay, I said our next dragon isn't technically new, but it does feature a surprising new ability. Speed Stingers put the race and race to the edge. Hickam and Toothless first met them back on Burke but that crazy quick pack needed ice bridges to island hop. Not so with these more tropical speed stingers. Thanks to evolution, they've developed webbing between their claws, allowing them to run on water. And if they evolve at super speed too, who knows what new features they'll develop next time. Up next, night terrors. Boom! They may be small, but these guys give big scares. Night terrors act as the edge's alarm system and mimic the shape of a giant dragon at the first sign of danger. And Rekka knows something about them too. Stun the leader with a dragon root arrow and watch them scatter. We first met numbers seven and six on our list in How to Train Your Dragon 2 Skull Crusher and the Sea Shockers. Sounds like an awesome band name. <laughs> Designed after a scared beetle's shiny armored exoskeleton, we learned that Skull Crusher actually belongs to the Rumblehorn breed. He's so good at sniffing out trouble that Hiccup and Fish Legs created a new class for Skull Crusher and his kin, the Tracker class. Lots of other dragons now fall into the tracker class, including Stormfly, who located Hiccup and Toothless on Itchy Armpit, and the Dragon Blade after Eret, son of Eret, tossed it into the sea. Twice! Until now, all we knew about the Sea Shockers was that they belonged to the title class, had two heads, and were all around creepy. But thanks to Fish Legs, we now see how Sea Shockers earned their name. These manta ray-like dragons form electrical arcs between their snouts, like a pair of electrodes. Question. Who would win in a battle between a sea shocker and a squirrel? Answer, the fans. But let's ask the experts who make a race to the edge. Maybe they can tell us even more about the newer dragons we'll meet next. Dear Race to the Edge team, what new dragons can we expect next? And who would win in a fight between a sea shocker and a squirrel? As we wait for our Gmail reply, let's check out who's next on the countdown. The catastrophic Quaken. Now we're on a roll. Impressive. Definitely a boulder class. Hiccup, what do you think of Catastrophic Quaken as a name? Well, I think we should probably name it later and focus on not getting killed by it now. The latest addition to the boulder class, the Catastrophic Quaken, has actually existed behind the scenes for quite some time. That's right. He's one of the dragons jumped up by master character designer, Nico Marley. Notice the triple jaw? That's one of Nico's signature touches, also found on the Snap Trapper. But with all that rolling around, do you think anybody could ride a Quaken? <laughs> Good thing Vikings wear helmets. Don't say that. What? Helmets? Why? Because you might attract our next dragon. Perhaps the most mysterious new dragon is the Armor Wing. That must be why he's in the mystery class. Are there others like him? How did he learn to weld metal together to protect his scaleless underbelly? No scales. That's why it needs metal. And where did that metal come from in the first place? Take a closer look at the weapons fused into its armor, Dragon fans. You might just find a clue or two. Okay, Darius, I got a riddle for you. What's black and white and red all over? Oh, I know this one. It's a skunk drinking tomato juice. <laughs> no, it's a tightening monstrous nightmare. Uh... 
Titan Wing monstrous nightmare? Come on! Could this get any worse? Oh yeah, this guy caused a lot of trouble on the edge when he fought Hook and Fang with Hook Fang. But wait a minute, I see the red and the black. Where's the white? In his fire? According to his stats on the Rise of Burt game, this Titan's flames burn white hot and let him slash through solid rock like it was yak butter. And there's no better way to ring into the new year like a nice bite of yak butter on toast. Mmm. It's not the new year! Then why do I hear singing? Uh-oh. That's coming from the death song, which uses its siren song to lure unwitting dragons to their doom. I don't know how it can sing with all that amber in its throat. Ugh, what a way to be trapped. Speaking of trapped, how long do you think the death song will really be locked in that cave? After all, we've already seen a dragon break out. Remember the Skrill? I don't know. But I'm not too worried thanks to number one on our list of our newest dragons. Here she is in all her glory. It's the swift and steely Windshear. With her durable metal plating, barbed tail, and dagger sharp wings, this razor whip strikes first and asks questions later. One single blade of her tail is as deadly as the sharpest battle axe. Ah! They say razor whips have poisonous tears, but we wouldn't know because Windshear never cries. Fortunately, Heather has become the first rider to befriend a razor whip and bring out its softer side. Heather even uses Windshear's discarded scales to form her own body armor and double-headed axe. I'm your girl. And that rounds up our top 10 news dragon from Race to the Edge. <laughs> Look, it's a dragon mail. What's quick, it's Sarah and Darius. You sent us a demo, so we sent answers. Well, partial answers. We can't just give all the secrets away. Oh, give me that. The next batches of episodes will introduce another flightless dragon, a triple threat, and shows how the grouchiest Viking met the laziest dragon. P.S. A Skrill versus a Sea Shocker is a draw. The Skrill has aerial advantage, but water is his only weakness, giving the Sea Shocker equal footing. Who do you think would win? Tell us your opinion in the comments below and feel free to guess at what those new dragons might be. If you even want to see more of the new dragons, you can watch pretty much any episode. But we'll start with Edge of Disasters 1 and 2 and A Snow Way Out. You'll find links to those and the dragons Rise of Burt game below. And be sure to subscribe to DreamWorks TV for more of the down low from the archipelago. Three, two, one, happy new year! It's not the new year! Thank <laughs> you.